Hello, hi. My name is Damai Ni. I'm the product manager responsible for Alibaba Cloud Database on the international market. Today, I'd like to talk about one of the best practices uh, using Alibaba Cloud RDS MySQL to set up an active, active environment. And that's very common for our customers globally to set up this MySQL uh, environment. So first, let's talk about what is active, active. So basically, uh, active active solution is at least uh, two nodes within the same cluster or across um, uh, the availability zone, and both actively running the same kind of database service simultaneously. Well, the similar architecture can apply to cross is uh, or cross region. Well, you need at least uh, two nodes. Why customer want using that? The user usually uses active active to achieve two things. One is called high availability. Another is for the workload balance. So high availability actually can be achieved by active, active, or active passive. Passive is, um, high availability is like we have one master, another is a standby. That if the master, uh, for some reason, uh, crashed, the workload will automatically or manually fill over to the standby node. So actually today we will talk about both. So sometimes when people talk about active active because it is an uh, enterprise features. Uh, it is true, but uh, for enterprise feature, it is also achieved by the open source um, MySQL or PostgreSQL database by set up the environment using a relatively simple architecture. So this way, this page will share a little bit about how uh, Alibaba uh, Cloud can provide that setup. So look at the picture here. This is actually a, set, a simple setup from left to right. First, we look at this one region, we call it region A, that is in one physical location. And usually, uh, user will use the ECS, which is a, a, a computation kind of virtual machine that set up their applications, then go through a proxy, and that proxy will automatically route in the read and the write request to different nodes. So you look at that in the middle, we have a well-built zone one that have two nodes. One is called RW node, that actually take over the uh, read and write request. Usually the write have a workload being going there. And also on the same zone in this particular architecture, we have the read only node that take over only the read only request. For example, we want to have a complex query that doing a reporting about uh, uh, for example, the top uh, uh, user activities uh, of a particular game that can go to the read only node or we want to aggregate a salary reporting of the department of the employees. That's how it goes. And the go to, to the right side is we have a well zone zone two, which have a standby node. That standby node usually hidden from the applications in a way that uh, uh, it will not actively taking over any workload during a normal uh, operation. However, in the case of the primary node, which is the RW node here, uh, for some reason crash, uh, uh, automatic fill over will happen and cross to the standby node. And the application or and the user, they go through the left hand side the ECS player application and go through the connections, go to the proxy, do not need to uh, worry about that because the proxy will automatically point to the standby node, which is at this moment already promoted to the primary node. Okay, to summarize, in this particular uh, architecture, we have a single region with two availability uh, zone, and the workload balancer balance will be achieved by the two nodes, that uh, the active node, which is the RW node, and the uh, active node, which is the RO node, the read-only node. And the proxy provide for simply uh, simplified the application connections as this is totally transparent to application. And uh, we provide the, the high availability cross AZ as the standby, as saying it's active, passive, uh, high availability. 
So this is one of the common usage of MySQL on Alibaba Cloud. And there are several variations. For example, uh, the deployment can be set up to within one AZ. That means the standby node also can be set up within the uh, availability zone one. And then that will be some reduction of the high availability in the case of the uh, AZ1 uh, totally fail. And also, for the load balancer, usually we can set up two, three to five read-only nodes. And also it can be deployed across the AZs to uh, balance the read-only request. Uh, it's commonly for OLTP workload as uh, usually OLTP workload means two to uh, one write corresponds to two to eight uh, read. That's how the balance for typical TP workload. And so how we really achieve that create that on Alibaba Cloud? We will do as simple as step one, two, three. First, we will create a high availability MySQL cross AZ. And then we will add it to the read-only node and configure it to have read-write split proxy. Okay, let's go through that. Um, I'm already uh, in this uh, Alibaba cloud, and uh, this is the panel. Let's see whether I'm here. Okay, sorry, right, going to the wrong place. So I want to go to the RDS. At this moment, in the Singapore region, we have no RDS here. So let's create one. Create an instance. Since we are doing the demo, I will just have a testing environment. To do that, I will, uh, instead of choose the uh, duration for one whole year, which certainly have some discount for that by doing the whole one year sub creation. Uh, but for my testing purpose, I will use the pay as you go. So we already choose the Singapore region and we have MySQL 5.7. And for this one, we will using high availability. And since this suggests the uh, local SSD, which is actually have a better performance, I will choose that, see whether it works. So I would like, although as we mentioned, we can set up within one AZ, but for high availability, I like to have two. So I choose the A and the B. And uh, using VPC always is the best practice here. So let's try that. Um, well, to save some budget, I will go to maybe uh, one core to G. That's how much it costs me. And uh, since I'm only testing small portion, let me reduce the uh, the storage capacity. Okay, so it even only cost me uh, 11 cents per hour to have this. Let me have this little bigger so we can see it better. Okay, so now we have it. And do be aware, so this is a single, uh, for the single uh, instance, okay. But we will have, have, have both the primary and the stand up, so that will be two instances here. Let me choose that. You know what? I will run, run something later. So I will choose two core for J. Let's see how much it costs me. Okay, 21 cents per hour is fine. You can, as you can see, for different CPU and memory, the mass, maximum con connection and IOPS will be different. Only need one, so cool. I will have that. Let me click. By now, we have a summary here, have all the information. I actually have a cheat sheet here, but I want to keep that information so that I won't be forgot. So what I will do, um, I will have the demo text. I will keep all the information to myself. 
Certainly, you can retrieve that later once it's configured. Okay, I need to accept it and go pay now. Well, for some reason, I think that because my account was uh, temporary log off, so I was okay. It's just taking some time. My apology. Okay, it's done. Well, by the way, uh, I'm shooting that in Sunnyvale, California, so there do do have some latency since I'm actually connected to the. Uh, region that in uh, Singapore, so it's kind of uh, around the global kind of uh, latency here. Okay, now I have it. Let's go back to see, and uh, I looking at we have this ready. Okay, it's here. It's called uh, creating. It usually take uh, a few minutes, and depends on the. The server kind of peak time or kind of slow time. So I'm just keep refreshing. One thing I want to change here. So there are two things. One is this kind of name. I want to just give myself some note here. So I use there and hmm. Don't like this auto correction. Singapore demo one. So just to know which one we are talking about. Click that. So this is creating and uh, here there are several things. Okay, I want to look at there. So we already know all this information is a Singapore AZ one and B, and we have an instant name here for this. Uh, 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 database instance to collect to connect that. There are several ways. Um, <coughs> one is to have a public endpoint that I can connect that through my, for example, laptop here. The demo laptop I connect to the database. Another is connect with using the ECS. I will demonstrate both ways. And the both ways we need to. Uh, if you connect through the ECS within the same VPC, you don't need to have the public endpoint. But I think I want to demo both ways, so I will have this one. I will click it, I will apply for that. Are you sure? Okay, yes. So, now I need to configure the, uh, the whitelist. Okay, let me go there. Okay, now I have this one done. Okay, this one should enable me to access that through my laptop, access this um, uh, the instance. Okay, let me go there. Now, this all set up and up and running. So just want to keep this for myself. So I know where to pin to go. So since I want to access this one, I need to have account information and the create account means need to have something here. Okay, so this is my user ID. And uh, at least three of the following. So let's, uh, let me have a check here. Certainly I will change that later. They think eight characters, uppercase, lowercase, number, special character. I need to add these three, so I will do this. 
I will have a one, two, three, four, five, six, and a. Did it work or not? Well, I'm not suggesting you do that for uh, for your password. It's just for my purpose of demon demonstration here. it works. It may take some time. Let's see how long it take. Oh, at the same time, let me try to get in there. Okay. So I think this is very familiar to everyone already. So this is how you connect to um to a MySQL. I already have MySQL client installed, so I have that over here, but I need to replace the external endpoint. Well, to be aware that we only have this MySQL instance, and we are pointing to the primary node of this high availability setup. We haven't set up the proxy yet, okay? So see whether it works. Let's go in there. That's my password. Remember, we have that. Finger cross. Oh, I'm in. Cool. So, but we haven't used any database yet. Let's see what I'm doing. Show tables. No, we didn't. Select any database yet. See which database we are using. Oops. Oh, yes. Okay, now we have these several databases. And uh, but to be a good person, I will create my own. I will create a database the my. And uh, later on, I will run a TBCC benchmark. So I will also create a. a database tpcc here. Okay, now let's use the my. Connect to the my database. Create a table just for fun. T1 is almost integer. It's into T1. Uh, sorry, value. Value is all value. Okay, now we have it. So clearly we have is up and running now, lucky. So we know we have a database and we created it and with a little bit of struggle, because I forgot something here. Uh, now we have it and we configured a white list that can set up, I can connect it through my laptop to there. Okay, now I like to show what is the better way, which is connect through ECS which is usually our user will do because they will also set up their application to that uh, uh, in that ECS running as a virtual Linux machine. Well, to save some time, I already set up it. And uh, I know where it is, I, uh, I do have that set up. Okay, this is my safe sheet. And uh, now let me connect to This one, I'm not going to tell you my password here. Okay, I have it. Yep, that is one of the machine I set up earlier. And uh, to connect, to connect with uh, the MySQL we just created, we need to configure that one which is actually set up the security group. There are two things we need to set up. One is the, um, we go to the connection first. One is to make sure we have the same um, VPC, which I actually already did, I checked that earlier. Another is we want to set up in the same security group. Go in there.
Oh, by the way, I clicked the wrong place, but I want to show you the two databases we just created. Remember the earlier one we created here, the my and the TBCC? It already show up. Okay, it's up and running. Looks fun. Let's go to the connection where I want to connect. So you want to have more information, you can click how to connect to RDS to look at how usually we, uh, uh, user will connect that. But now let me set up it. There's a proxy, we don't need that yet. Oh, there's the information here. Configure. We did the IP address already. Now we look at the security group. Actually, the reason it show up because I do have the ECS already created. Since I only have one ECS, so I only have this one security group. So it's really too simple for me to do this demo. Click it. And there. Oh, let's see how I can connect it. This time, I will go back to the information. Since this is within the same region within the Alibaba's uh, internet, so I will use the uh, internet, uh, uh, internet and the point here. So let me quit this one. Well, I don't have to actually. I just want to copy paste the connection. So remember the one I just highlighted is from my laptop directly to the MySQL. And I will copy this demo here, but I will change the endpoint, which pretty much the IP address here, to the port is the same, by the way, the default MySQL port here. Okay, remember. Okay, got in. Let's use the database since we create this one. It did change. We just created that table, right? So let's do it again. One. Okay, we have one. So, you know what? Just to see, we can certainly connect. Okay, we collect another row there, and uh, using this connection, well, it definitely show two rows because we are talking about the same uh, database, but that's using different uh, connections. Now we show you how to connect to the database we just created. Okay, here to show how this connection works. This is a simple architecture. So basically I using my laptop to SSH to the ECS and the ECS connect to the database node here. And in between the database have a load balancer here, that's the uh, automatic create, okay? So come back to this. I like to have the read write split. Let's go back to the PowerPoint we just show you. We already have this primary node and the standby node. Now we like to create, uh, actually we need to create the proxy first. Then we added the read only node so that we can have the load balance. Go back to here. You haven't enabled the proxy yet. That's what I'm saying. We have to uh, enable that proxy first. Let's do it. Okay. Now we create that one. We want to uh, ID the. Uh, let me see where the service. So it's creating. So that's while well, we are waiting. Let's. Uh, create a read-only instance. So the read-only instance, you can have, as we mentioned, we have one or you know, three to five. So we only need one here, and I like to that within the same availability zone with my private node. So I put it here, the uh, zone A here. 
want to have the same release and we have the same capacity as we just have it, okay? So that's, this is the information from the primary RDS. Usually I will suggest we using the, the identical ones for the same purpose, okay? So the same VPC, everything the same, but I don't want to change it. By now, accept it. Okay, again, as I mentioned, since uh, this request is to go really go to the Singapore, so it take well take some time. Now the order complete. Let's go back to the console. I will actually go back to the one we just used. I want to see whether my uh, I'm an impatient person, so I will do a refresh. So creating. Now we have this instance name here, okay? This is the instance for the proxy, okay? And it already has this endpoint. Here's the difference here. So let me copy this endpoint and go to my, let's see. So this is the, we just have this information, which is for the primary uh, node. Well, just a password, by the way. And now we have the proxy. This is the proxy. And we later on, we can either, if we want to point to the primary node, we can use this endpoint directly go to primary node. Or if we want to let the load balancer and the proxy to balance the workload, we will just use in the, um, the proxy, okay, proxy endpoint. It's so creating, so I need to give it some time. By the way, let's see, we, while we are waiting, we look at some of the features. So once we create a MySQL instance, uh, there are some uh, basic monitoring system that will be available that for show the CPU memory usage and the disk IO stuff like that, and you can use in that. And it's also a serviceability thing, okay. Now, see, we already set up that. So we have this kind of more complex kind of multi-zone setup showing. And there are also logs, by the way, that's very important. And by the way, the error node, this is a node. So it's not really something we need to worry about. There's a very, very important feature it's called slow query log here. They will show some query if taking longer time. And uh, now we think we didn't really run much, so we really don't need to show that, okay? So don't have any information here. Go back to the database. We have these two databases up and running. And uh, I want to look at whether the uh, database connection is here. And the right split proxy is running. So it's running means I have it already. So I can connect to the endpoint, okay? What I will do, what I will do. So now I like to use the, uh, the ECS as a connection. Let me create it here. Okay, so remember this for your connection, go to the primary node, node, primary node. I will now ask it to go to my endpoint of my proxy. Okay. They, this password will be the same one as we connect to the primary node. Now we are in, just to show we are in, and we want to use the, my, the database here, and he one. So the two row, and again, just to, for the fun to show we have two connection. We have three row here. Okay, now we set up the 
Chrome can see already. And if I want to go back to previous one, so we already have these two. Um, uh, we have these two uh, MySQL instance that up and running. The master is there, but the the read only one that is still being created. Okay, it takes some time. While we're doing that, again, I want to edit the instant name to make it um, recognizable. So I do that again. That's my name. I don't know what happened here. And it's Singapore. And I have to have demo R O one the number one read only mode confirm. So now I have it. Okay, so let's see if it's creating the ready or not. So now I'm looking at the control panel, the, the panel of this read-only node. This is the instance that show where I am. And I didn't configure anything because I don't need to directly connect to it. But if for, for some reason you like to send your workload directly to this read-only node. You can apply either connect using the internet endpoint, or you can apply for the public endpoint. So that I will set up on my machine. What I will do is next, I will load the TBCC workload to it and to demonstrate how the, uh, the work will be connected to there. Okay, while we are waiting, how about this? Let me go to the TCCC load because I need to change. Oops, wrong place. I need to go to out oh, the SQL. I apologize. Okay, create table. Use TPCC. That's it. The database. Currently, this database is empty. Okay, so this is for the create statement. Uh, that's create table statement. I believe I also have an index, yeah, foreign key. That's the constraint about PPCC. I previously I do a testing on the TPCC one database. Now I need to change to reflect to my database here. I want to make sure we are here. It's still creating. Take a little bit longer than I thought. Never mind. What I will do, I will continue to as I mentioned, since I'm when doing the doing this. I'm kind of pretend that I'm also an application programmer and I'm creating a table right now. Okay, go back to my page sheet, how to use TPCC here. Oops, what I did, what I did. Okay, this is my period and just copy here. But now let's make sure I'm using that and point to the proxy. Okay. Hopefully it works. Well, if not, we'll try again. Okay. Well, it works. Show table. Oh, it's there. Okay. So now we can see how the table got created. I like to do something similar by create this. Uh, by added the. Uh, I did the foreign keys.
Oh, it's here. Oh, finally it's up and running. Let me just to for the sake of to testing it, I want to look at the internal. One node is the internal proxy. I like just to do a connection, make sure we are there, okay? Well, it's only we're not going to do this, okay? Just want to do a connection. Okay, just to show what we are doing, let me create it here too. Okay, on the left hand side, we will try to connect to the read only node. On the right hand side, we actually connect directly uh, through my laptop to the primary node. I will connect first here. The user ID is, is NIDM, and the password is the same. It's here, and we we'll use this database first. On the left hand side, we actually in uh, Alibaba ECS virtual machine, which is better with the CentOS machine, and we'll connect to the read only node of this uh, MySQL cluster using the same user ID. Well, you know what? Remember something we did for the primary node that we didn't do that here? That's why we didn't have the connection. Let me stop it. We need to configure the connection. We are under the control panel. We have the RO node here. We are here. And uh, we need to configure the white list. Look, okay, here we go. I did the security group. That's how my ECS can connect to it. Without adding this one, it will not allow. That's a security purpose here. Okay, I did it. Let's see. I'm trying again. No, I mean, without using the same one. Remember, this is the read-only node. Oops. What? We have three table. So three rows. I apologize. Here it is. Okay. I don't want to do it, but just for the fun of that. We try to insert the fifth row. Wow, that's an error. Why? Because we are in the read-only node, and they will not take the right, which is the insert statement. So that's exactly the purpose here. Up and running. Let's apply for the read and write split. It's already enabled. Now, it's, now we are enabled it. There is a particular setting by default is 30 seconds. That is because we are doing either asynchronous or semi-synchronized from the, the primary node to the read-only node. There can be some kind of latency in between. So we set up the um, the latency throughout a uh, uh, throughout with thirty seconds. If that exists, in that we will not uh, 
rewrote this workload to the read-only node. Okay, let me do that. Okay, so now we have the read and write split. As you can see, that is the architecture we are talking about. This network here. Writing down. By the way, this is RW proxy. And this is proxy, database proxy for the read and write. Well, see? Interesting enough, they are identical. Why? As already originally, before we create this split and the point, this is for the master only. And so it's the same now we have this proxy. So the application don't need to worry about that. But still we gave the option if a customer, the user want to point their application to the primary node only directly using this endpoint, or point to a particular R node directly using a laser point. But they want to use proxy, both we will use this read and write split proxy here. Okay, let me just do this. Here is what happens. I will try it, make sure it works before we go to the next step. Okay, you no, I want to use TBCC because that's what I will try to do next. Okay, so it's here in the show tables. Um, just to monitor that TBCC show tables. Okay. We have nothing here yet since we didn't uh, really do anything about count star from warehouse. Okay. Next thing we will do is trying to load some data there. Okay, let's open my cheat sheet. This is the loading the TBCC workload. Trying to use the, the this is a kind of external tool, so you, they're using the IP address. So I like to see which IP address I want to use here. I need to know which IP address, just uh, how the tool works. Do a simple thing. Let me pin it. Look at my proxy and look at my endpoint. Got it. So this is the IP address. Which is the one, two, twenty-one. Okay. Well certainly I'm not suggesting to do that, but since we are doing a demo, I just want to make sure it's as simple as possible. So I'm actually Hard code the password here. I should not. You should not do it for your uh, for your working environment. 
I'm doing a demo, so I'm fine. And uh, so I'm using this uh, TPCC database and uh, my ID is NIDM password. Here is one warehouse. This is how the TPCC benchmark works. We only use one warehouse that do a demonstration purpose. Okay, hope it works. It's loading data right now through this uh, load okay we come back and uh, everything is loading and uh, supposed to be successful all I need to do is looking at the uh, the warehouse okay I have one that's the smallest union of a TPCH workload no I forgot which one I connect so I've created it to make sure So the previously through my laptop that I connect to the primary uh, the uh, the primary node here we will do one more thing for the TPCC. That's it. The star. The TPCC, by the way, is a OLTP workload that was first published in back in the 1990s, I think in 1994, and the commonly used to measure the throughput and the latency of a OLTP database. So I will do that, see whether it works. Up and running, and run up for 10 seconds. Just to warm up things. Okay, the so measurement start. So basically, it can tell you is I will do ten connections, warm up for ten seconds, and measure for twenty seconds. Okay, at the same time, let's see the workload. This is our primary. I will look at the monitoring. Too fast is done. So basically, for this simply uh, workload, we have close to three thousand TPMC. That's the transaction per um, per minute. Okay. So we have this one. I like to look at the database. The disconnection was because I take a break and come back. Okay, now I'm running. Let me go to the primary. All these monitoring are coming with the MySQL. You don't need to pay an additional fee for this. Okay, see that was earlier when we run it, run this TPCC. That's a jump on the CPU usage and the memory usage. And also the disk space was kind of raised a little bit uh, when we load the data. I, IOPS is definitely here. Connection, because we have 10 connections, remember that? We have 10 connections there, so that shows. Let me do some count. No, I didn't connect to any the data yet. So what I will do is I will connect back. Remember this one, I'm connect through the proxy. That's the most common usage here. This is the proxy and the point. I will use TPCC. Now let's count how many orders I have. Okay, this really is fast. Okay, that will not, and I will run another one, which will be quite slow. This basically a simple query with two table, with a customer table and history table, and using the their primary key and their foreign key to do a, a join here to find all the first name of all the customers that show up in the history. So it takes time. I 
At the same time, how about this? I'm connecting to the primary node right now through my laptop. And you TTCC. I will run something identical. But this one, I will only need 10. So only need the top 10 one. I didn't do any order by, so that should be very fast. Now I use the same one, but how about this? I just intentionally make it slower. I put 10,000 here. So it takes some time. Here it also takes some time. It's coming back the result now to show up on my uh, ECS. The right hand side takes two seconds, something like that, to return a 10,000 row. Well, apparently it's much more on the left hand side. It have 31,000, take about one minute. Hopefully something will show up here. Again, I want to make sure where I am. First, I will look at this one. This is the primary node. I mean, look at the logs. Hmm, I didn't say anything. I go back, look at my read only. Remember, this long running query I'm go to the end point. I didn't direct where it to go. So the automatic load balancer kick off, kick in here. This is my read only node. It shows up. It shows up that the, the one I just have, this is the identical query here that being sent here. The slow query log is actually leverage a MySQL feature that will record all the slow queries through uh, that is longer than some time. And you can see the totally is taking 75 seconds, which is here, similar, 75 seconds. And uh, this is how many row passed and how many row returned. The same here, okay? And uh, as you can see, it's actually being automatically rolled to the read-only node. How about this? Let me do that again. Remember this one, I remove this limit. Uh, you know what? What the hell, let me do this. I will do a limit to 32,000. We should return the whole set of the result. Instead of 2.3435 seconds. And it's up and running. Barring some anomaly, we will have to wait for roughly 75 seconds uh, for it to come back. Okay, something began to show up. Well, 71 seconds, something it have a little variation here. So let's see where this query was run. This is the read-only node. I'm looking at the log. It's still the first one we are we were running. Go back. I'm looking at the log here. Slow. It shows the first one two point some second. Uh, the limit 10,000 row also show up here for the primary because remember on the right hand side I connect directly to the primary node so even the query is a read only one that will be go directly to the uh, to the read and the write node the primary one
Oops, not this one. Okay, now I did a you know, manual refresh here. You can see this query that is running for 71 seconds is here. This is the query we just run and we force it go to the primary node. Okay, so that's it. That's for today's uh, demonstration.